Excel's XLOOKUP function is a great tool for finding data in a list or table. And in this video, I'll show you how to take it one step further and pick out individual values or cumulative totals from a grid of data where you need to provide two reference points. I'm not going to cover how to do this in older versions of Excel that don't have XLOOKUP or dynamic arrays. But in the example file, which I'll provide a link to in the comments, I will include an example of how to do this using index match and some helper cells. In this first example, I'm using drop downs to pick out the two criteria that I'm looking for. So the projects down the left hand side and the regions across the top. So here you can see that for the alpha project for the north region, it's 444. I wanted to see that for the west, it's 400. I wanted to see the same region, but for the delta project, you can see it's 181. And this is done by nesting two XLOOKUP functions. First of all, we want to look up project. So we'll refer to delta here. And in the table of data, I'll refer to the projects, but I'll include the total as well, because we may want to pull the total in as something to pick out. Then the trick is to pull in the whole table of numbers, not just a particular region, so that the XLOOKUP function returns a dynamic array. So in this example, it's returned all the data for project delta. So we have our north, south, east and west regions as well as our total then what we need to do is use another xlookup to decide which record we're pulling in in terms of which region so we'll do another xlookup this time we'll pull in the region we're looking for it initially in this row here and that will determine which value it wants to pull from the dynamic array we've already returned so in this instance for west XLOOKUP will want to return the fourth value in our range that we have. The return array here is the dynamic array, which it picks up as J11 with the hash on to indicate the dynamic array. We want it to return an error if it's not apparent. We want an exact match. And it returns the 181. Now, the trick to get the formula that we have up here is to combine these two together. So we replace the dynamic array in this formula with the X lookup that gives us the dynamic array. Copy that out of there and add it into this formula in place of the dynamic array. So we can get rid of that. And now this formula here is exactly the same formula that we have in cell K5. So if I change that to project beta, beta west is 258. If you want beta total, we get the 863. Here you can see that how you can quite easily pull out an individual value out of a grid by referring to the two criteria using nested XLOOKUPs. To calculate cumulative totals, I have the same table of project data, the same projects and the same totals. But instead of by region, I've got this by quarterly values for revenue improvement using a date value. So for project beta to the quarter ending 30th of June, so the end of quarter two, the cumulative improvement it's calculated as 278. And if I just add those two quarters of project beta, you can see that it is 278. Now in this version, rather than nesting two XLOOKUPs, we use one XLOOKUP to return our dynamic array and then wrap that in a sum if function. So first of all, let's do the XLOOKUP to find the project. Again, we'll bring in the totals down the project side. But in the return array, we don't need to bring in the totals because if we do a cumulative to the end of the year, it should equal the total, and the sum if won't work to bring in the total anyway. Let's return a standard error if it's not found, and an exact match. So we have our values here for beta, the 192, the 86, the 352, and the 233. Next, we need a sum if formula to work out 
which of these dates is less than or equal to the date that we have selected in the drop down. So we've referenced the date range, we put less than or equal to in the quote marks, and we concatenate the date with the ampersand. Based on that, we want to return the values in the dynamic array. So we get the same value as we've got up here for beta, which we've already checked is 278. The next step is to bring the XLOOKUP in, in place of the dynamic array reference. So we replace J11 hash with the XLOOKUP formula. We're getting the same value, so we can get rid of that. And the formula in J12 is the same as the formula in J5, although in J5 I have locked some of the cell references using the dollar sign. So if we change the project to project epsilon, we have 337 being the total of these two values. If we want the total for the year, we just select the end of quarter four and we get the 1273, which we can see in the table here. Thanks for making it this far into the video. I really hope you found something that can help you with your Excel files. If you did, please hit that like button and consider leaving a comment as they really help the channel. And if you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.